Welcome in the 14th episode. In today's episode, we will implement the select category screen. If you want to help support this channel, hit the subscribe button below this video, turn on notification so we will not miss any future content. Okay, so let's get started. Let's open our project. And first of all, let's go to our scenes folder. And inside this folder, I will right click create scene and I will call it select category. Let's now go to our file build settings and let's just grab the select category and drop it into the scenes in build. So make sure you have three scenes in there. Okay, let's close this window. Now let's open the select category scene. And then first of all, let's uh, adjust our main camera. So let's click on the main camera and make sure you have the auto graphics projection selected. And then let's now let's go to the scripts folder and then grab our game utility class and drop it onto the main camera. Okay, so now let's uh, click right click in our hierarchy, select UI canvas and this canvas change the render mode from the screen space overlay to screen space camera. Grab our main camera and drop it into the render camera. And now in the canvas color, let's change the UI mode to be scale with screen size. Reference resolution will be 1080 by 1920. And then match value, I will set this to be 0 0.5. Okay, so we have our main camera set now. Let's add our background. So right click on the canvas, UI image, and I will call this image background. Let's uh, assign our source image. So I will just go to the graphics folder and you should have the background picture. Just grab this picture and then drop it into the source image. And now press the set native size and you should have your background in. So now let's right click on the canvas, UI image, and I will call this image title. And now let's go to our select puzzle folder and you should have the title here. So select the title, grab this title sprite and drop it into the source image. And now you can set the set native size. I will change this scale to be 0 0.8 and then 0 0.8 and 0 0.8. And now we can move it to the top. So I will just change this position to be 751. I think this position is okay. So now let's let's add the bottom. So I will just right click on the canvas UI bottom. And I will call this bottom back bottom. Okay. And now let's just remove the text component. So I will just go to the back bottom, select this text and then press delete. So let's apply the graphics for our back button. So the graphic for this button is under the graphics and then game screen and you should have the back button graphic. So ju just grab this texture and then drop it into the source image. Set native size and I will just move it up over here, maybe on the side. I think this looks okay. Okay, so we have our UI elements. Now let's add some uh, the scrolling list. So let's first of all create new canvas. So I will just right click UI canvas. And this canvas will be called puzzle category scroll, scroll list. Okay, let's move it below the, our canvas. And then let's change this render mode to be screen space camera. Drop our main camera. UI scale mode, scale with screen size, change the reference resolution to be 1080, 1920, the match value to be 0 0.5. Now let's right click on this, on this new canvas, UI image, and this image I'm going to call scroll list, scroll list, and then let's uh, click on the add component. And let's find the scroll rectangle. 
let's apply the source image. So for the source image, I will just click this small dot on the side and I will just type UI and we need to select the UI mask. Okay, and now let's select the, set the width to be 800 and the height to be 1483. Okay, and I will just move this uh, this list on the Y position. So as you see, this is our list. And I will just move it, move it down. So it's not going to overlap our text. I think this position is okay. So as, as you see, it's below, it's below our, our title. So let's, uh, let's go to our scroll rectangle. And let's uncheck the horizontal. And set this, uh, that's the acceleration rate to be 60. Let's right click on the scroll list, create empty, and then let's add component and let's add the vertical layout group. Let's set the spacing to be 15, 1, 5, and let's from the chart force expand, let's uncheck this height. Okay, so we need only width. And let's name this, uh, this object to be scroll list content. Okay, so we have our content and now we can add our first button. So I will just right click on the scroll list content UI image and then let's go to our graphics, select, pu select puzzle. And we should have the slice to graphic. So I will just grab this graphic and drop it into the source image and then press set native size. As you see, the button is currently rendered behind the background. So in order to fix this, I'm going to select the puzzle category scroll list canvas and then go to the order in layer and let's change this order to make sure this, this, this list is always in front. So I will just set this number to be one. Okay. So once you've done that, your button should, should go in the front. So let's go back to our image. So we have our, our slice. So now let's uh, go back to our scroll list. And let's populate the variable for the, our scroll rectangle. So for the content, I will just uh, grab our scroll list content and drop it into the content. And then let's select the scroll list and change this, uh, this anchoring point to be stretched. Okay, and then I will change the value on the left to be zero and on the right to be zero. And from the bottom, let's set the value to be 0 0.5 and on the bottom to be 0 0.5. So as you see, our bottom is currently on the top and in the middle. So another thing we want to do is we want to go to our scroll list right at the bottom, add component and then input mask and select the mask component. So once you select it, as you see, our bottom is, is good because it's masked out. So we need to change the size of this button. So let's go to the image and let's just make the same size as our list. Okay, so we have the same size of the button. So now we have our image. Let's call it actually the category button. And then let's add uh, the, the writing for this button. So I just right click on this category button, UI image. And I will just call this writing. And let's go to our select puzzle graphic. And then let's uh, let's grab one of the graphics from this folder. So as you can see, you have a few of them. I will just select the slice one. And then set native size. So as you see, this is the foot. I will move this writing to be at the top, somewhere here. Okay, and now let's add the progress bar. So I will just right click on this category button, UI image. And I will call this progress bar. And then let's go to our select puzzle. And then you have the bar texture. So grab this bar texture, drop it into the source image and then press set native size. And I will just move it a bit down. And maybe I will just make it a bit smaller as well.
okay so is in the center and now let's right click on this progress bar ui image and i will call this image fill in and let's grab our fill up texture and drop it into the source image and then press set native size and make sure the size the the width is the same as the progress bar so i will just copy the value and then paste it here so the width is exactly the same and then let's change the image type from simple to field and inside the fill method let's select the horizontal and then the fill origin is left and then let's set the fill amount to be i don't know whatever you like any value so as you see as we're going to progress as we're going to solve more categories we're going to fill this one up and uh, the one thing which we missed now is uh, the text so we want to have the text displaying how many categories is available how many puzzles are available for this category and how many we solved so i will right click on this category button ui text and i will just make some random text so it's going to be 10 by 20 let's say we want to display by default something like that let's change the font type to be bold the font size to be 40 make it in the middle and let's change the width to 160 and the height to be 70 so as you see the text is here let's move it a bit down to make sure it's on our progress bar and now let's try to fill this uh, progress bar in to make sure the text is not hidden and as you see the text is fine and everything is working fine okay so now let's go to our prefab folder grab our created button uh, category button and drop it into the prefabs so this the whole category button should turn blue now and now let's select this category button in the scene and i will change this name to be food okay so we have our food category let's add another one so grab our category button and drop it into the scroll list content and we need to just replace the graphics so now for the for the writing instead of the slice one i will just input the slice three Probably I should name this graphics a bit better. And then press the set native size. So we have our animals. Let's go back to the prefabs. Put another category. And let's actually change the previous one to be animals. Animals. The next category will be sport. Let's apply this sport writing for the sport. So this is going to be in our select puzzle and then sport will have a sport writing and then set native size. Okay, let's add another one. So go back to the prefabs, grab our category button, drop it onto the scroll list content. Let's change the writing to be hobbies. And this hobbies will be under the select puzzle. It's gonna be the hobbies. Hobbies. Okay. Drop drop the hobbies. Set native size. And let's re rename this prefab to be hobbies. Let's add another one. So go to the prefabs category button. And this one will be work. And let's actually add another one again. So the first one will be work. And then another one will be countries. Okay, so let's apply the writing for the word. So this is going to be the slice six. Set native size is actually work, not word. Okay, and now for the countries, let's change the writing to be countries and then set native size. So as you see, we have our buttons added in. 
So let's press play and see if everything works. So this is our scroll list. If you add more buttons, if you add more categories by yourself, this list will be expanded. So let's try to do that. So let's say you want to add one more category. So I will go to the prefabs, grab this category button, drop it into the scroll list content. And we have one more category. So as you see, you can scroll and you can see our category. Okay, so let's just delete this category button. Let's just go to the file, save. We're going to save everything. And now we're going to go back to our scenes, main menu. Let's go to the canvas, play. And inside the on-click event, let's click this on-click event. Let's grab our main camera, drop it into the, into the object from the functions, we're going to select the, okay, we don't have the game utility yet. So go to the, first of all, go to the main camera, go to the scripts, and then grab this game utility and drop it onto the main camera. And then again, go to the play button. And from the functions now, once you assign the main camera, select the game utility, load scene, and we want to load the scene, the select category scene. select category. Okay, let's press play and let's see if everything works. So once we press play, we are inside the, our category list and then we have the category buttons. So that's it for this episode. In the next episode, we will implement the behavior of this button and we will also work with this progress bar and we're going to start the game based on the selected category. If you have any problem with this implementation, please do let me know in the comments below. Also, if you like the series, please consider to like and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you again in the next episode.